All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the replay. If you're watching us online afterwards, welcome to our live session. If you're here with us on, on Zoom, we're, uh, we're up and running on Zoom. If you're, with, if you're watching with us on, on Facebook, we are streaming live on Facebook as well, um, <clears throat> on the Mission Suite Facebook page. So if, uh, if you have, I like to say, you know, wishful thinking, really, but I like to say if you've got <laughs> anybody out there that's, you know, at the last minute, hey, I can't register for this anymore, but I really want to get on it. How do I do it? And send them to the Mission Suite Facebook page and you'll see it there. Uh, but uh, we are we're looking forward to this uh, to this one here. Um, this is this should be a really great conversation. Uh, we've got some resources for you to download. You would have seen you should have seen that in the reminder email as well yesterday. But um, but if not, we'll be dropping this link here just as soon as we get going. Um, and I am pulling this up just so that I can quickly and easily paste it into the chat here so everybody should be able to see the link to download or to, to, to access rather the uh the google sheet that we put together to support kind of our conversation for this meeting here it's in the chat uh if you're watching this on the replay um or if you're watching this on facebook it will be in the comments of facebook page of the uh, of the um, wherever you're watching this um so if uh if you're trying to get access to that it's down there um but uh but yeah so let's kick things off here uh all right and thank you again so much for joining today's community table discussion what is new in sales and marketing in 2022 and more importantly how do i take advantage of it to actually grow my business um my name is ian campbell and i am the ceo of mission suite and joining me as always is dean isaacs dean is the founder of vantage group a business growth strategy firm he works with b2b companies helping them grow predictable profitable revenue and scale their organizations in 2018 dean launched the growth collaborative a, grow, a group consulting and mastermind program that helps b2b consultants and experts break through their revenue ceiling and generate high ticket clients month after month before we jump in, I want to address a couple of housekeeping items. We will obviously be taking questions throughout the session today. So if you do have questions, do me a favor, open up that Q&A uh, and use that Q&A uh, tab there on Zoom instead of using the comments. It helps us kind of keep everything a little bit more organized and uh, keeps everything just a little bit more straightforward for us uh, as we're going. So if you have questions, definitely pop them up in the Q&A and we'll make sure to get those answered for you. If you have, if you, if you want to just wait till the end, you can always do that. Again, the spreadsheet that's support that, that we'll be talking about a lot today, um, we'll be able to share, share, I'll be able to share my screen and I'll show you the spreadsheet too. But if you want to download it, if you want to pull or if you want to access it, the link to, to do so is in the chat. If you are on the replay here, then it's in the, it'll be in the comments section of the of the video and also it's in the um it'll be in the the recap email that goes out after this as well so plenty of ways to get access to everything that you need to do this but uh but in the meantime um let's jump in here uh so um first things first i'll talk about the spreadsheet uh because why not um so we'll well, we see a bunch of people have access to that or have already have started accessing this. That's awesome. Um, I am going to share my screen here so that we can I can show you what we're looking at. Um, the first page on this is how to customize the workbook. Um, obviously, uh, this if if I gave everybody access to my sheet, then everybody would be changing it, and then nobody would have anything clear. So we get we you've got view only access to this to to actually pull it down and be able to modify it. Simply uh, follow these instructions here. So click file and then click save. Uh, um, I'm sorry, click make copy, which apparently I forgot to add into this uh, this little copy this little these sheets here. But uh, but you'll make a copy of it. You'll rename the document. Say, select the folder that you want to that you want to save it to, and then you'll have the file that that's actually ready to use. And you'll be able to do any sort of modifications and everything that you need to do on, with that as well. 
Um, so there are three key things that we're going to go over today. We're going to talk a little bit about messaging, uh, current state, future state messaging. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, sales and marketing technology and different tools that you can be using to, to make an effective go of your sales, uh, a more effective go of your sales and marketing planning here and execution. And then uh, finally, we'll talk more about the collaborative selling guide. And uh, we'll talk about collaborative selling versus um, versus uh, consultative uh, selling. thank you consultative selling uh, <laughs> you. yeah right. and uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that um, but uh, but that's kind of how we're gonna go what we're gonna go through here but first to kind of jump to kick things off you know Dean we we hear about sales and marketing changing and you know there's everything new in this industry or that industry you know right. every year. And, you know, this is, I think we've, 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 we've done a couple, you know, what's new in sales, what's working right now, things like that. Um, so, I mean, now, as opposed to years past, what are you seeing in ways that, uh, what, what are some of the things that you're seeing that are different in sales and in marketing and, you know, finding people and, connect, and making that, making those connections? Yeah, you know, like you said, what's new in marketing and sales? Everything all the time, right? It constantly evolves. It constantly changes. And there are so many quote unquote experts out there pitching their ideas. And, and when you sometimes when you boil it down, it's the same old stuff that they're saying, right? So, but I do think that the, the truth is, is that buyers have changed the way they buy. And anybody that's heard me talk, have heard me talk about this a lot, right? Buyers have changed the way they buy, right? They have access to information, they never had five or even 10 years ago. And so they evaluate um, their solutions differently. They're further into the decision-making process before they ever raise their hand and want to talk to a salesperson, right? So fundamentally, that's changed. That dynamic has changed. And then you add on top of that, even let's take LinkedIn, for example. Prior to COVID, LinkedIn um, uh, was a great place to go prospect, right? To build relationships, to message people, to do all this good stuff. And during COVID, people just flocked to LinkedIn. And because of that, LinkedIn actually changed the rules. They limited the number of outbound messages and connection requests that you can do to 100 a week. Before that, you could use a tool and send thousands and thousands of connections a week. Well, that became this noisy, spammy environment. And so they changed the rules. So because they changed the rules, it changed what works. And so with LinkedIn, you have to have a very different approach today. And, and I hear people say all the time, well, LinkedIn doesn't work. There's too much spam going on. If you do it right, it still works. But what is right has changed to what mm. worked 24 months ago. So your, your choices of channel, choices of ways of getting in front of your market to prospect, to reach people has changed. Um, the way you need to structure your messaging has changed, right? And we'll get into some of the details of these. And then the ultimately, like you, you spend all this time and all this effort to get referrals and intros and leads. And now I'm telling you that buyers have changed the way they buy. So our sales have to change. It's constant, right? It never ends. But there are three key things really with each of those, with messaging, with reaching people and with sales that we'll get into something you can do today to change um, the results, to get better results with your marketing and your sales. So that's sort of how I look at it. It's, it's, it's an ever evolving, ever evolving market um, and an ever evolving challenge to stay ahead of what you need to do to get results. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I know that we didn't, uh, we, we didn't include a LinkedIn thing in here, but you know, of course, everybody's ears perked up at, uh, at the, at the, I'm sure everybody's ears perked up at the, the mention of the name because everyone's always asking, wondering how to how to do better on LinkedIn. Right. So quickly, uh, before we dive into the uh, before we dive into this workbook here, uh, can you kind of give us uh, uh, some some insights and thoughts into how to make uh, make LinkedIn more effective? Yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me read you a message that came into my LinkedIn inbox about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> And, and we'll let the audience decide if this is good or not, and then we'll go from there, right? So, hey, Dean, apologize if this is a bit of a bother. I promise not to keep pestering you, right? What an intro. After checking your profile, I thought you'd be a great fit for our free trial and thought it was worth connecting. Feel free, <laughs> I love it. Feel free to book a 15-minute discovery call to see if our newest $7,000 offer will work for you. What part of that is good? 
So what was the what was the tool? They, did they just never said anything? I guess I have to go click on this person's profile <laughs> and dig in and figure it out for myself because clearly they don't want to share the secret, right? Right. So the only good thing that in this whole message is she got my name right. <laughs> That's it. That's the only good thing in that message. So clearly, you know, we can learn from um, um, examples like this. Mm -hmm. So when we get into messaging, I'll talk about personalization. Sure. Personalization matters on LinkedIn. It right. matters on LinkedIn. So lead with value. You know that it's been, been talked about a lot, but what does value really mean? Mm -hmm. Share some insight. Share some insight. One of the things that I've seen work for consultants, for specifically anybody providing professional services, is to look at an individual's profile and find something of value to share. I noticed this about your profile. I'd love to share some insight. I noticed you're connected to that industry. I'd like to share some insight. Obviously, it needs to be a little more specific. Mm -hmm. But in that message, say, would you mind if I drop you an audio note with my thoughts? Very few people will say, no, don't send me an audio note. Because now you've created curiosity. Right. Led with value, something they care about. Now, the audio note is a feature on your phone, right? It's don't look for it on the desktop app. doesn't exist. It's on, the, on your um, LinkedIn mobile app. And then drop them a little audio note. 95% of audio notes that we send and my clients send get listened to. They get wow. open. And, and about 50% get replied to. That's a lot, right? It's almost yeah. like thinking about text messaging, right? 98% of all texts get opened. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of psych psychology that you see it, instant gratification, and you get an opportunity to build a relationship. With a voiced message, you get to show your personality. You need to add a little value. Don't sell them anything. Don't hide a sales pitch in a value message, value-based message, because they'll mm -hmm. see right through it. We all see right through it. Right. So that's one thing that works really great on LinkedIn is Share a little insight, create a little curiosity around value and ask if, if they don't mind if you share a voice message. Mm -hmm. That's a real great technique that's working yeah. on LinkedIn today. So just one little quick snippet versus trying to sell me some kind of $7,000 offer that I don't even know what it is. Yeah, right, right don't exactly. Do don't do that. <laughs> but the trial might be a good fit for you. Right. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Okay, cool. Well, then let's dive into uh, the spreadsheet here. Let's dive into the workbook and talk a little bit about messaging. You know, again, this is messaging yeah. is something that we've talked about in the past. And, you know, we've kind of used broad strokes to uh, we've talked about archetyping. We've talked about all different types of things. So tell me, you know, what is so kind of start out. Let's start off by explaining this whole kind of current state, future state concept. Yeah. and uh, dive into yeah. how to actually build it out. Yeah, so I kind of touched on this 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 concept of personalization just then, right, um, with the LinkedIn messaging. And, and personalization, I look at it from two perspectives. One is personalizing your message to your audience and or the individual you're targeting, but also personalizing your messaging for you, mm -hmm. which is what that first box is all about in the, in the, um, in the, sh in the shared sheet. What is your unique you, your approach, your process, your solution, right? And write it in terms based on your personal story, your a client success, a lesson you've learned. You're personalizing what you do to your audience, right? Mm -hmm. you, there's a, a lot of um, authors use this approach. That's how they write their book. They write their book based on a personal experience and it, a car accident they were in or a job they got or a bad boss or whatever it is. A lot of the core of what they're sharing, if it's leadership, you know, um, lessons or, or whatever it is, it's pretty similar to everybody else, but they frame it from their personal perspective. So I've seen some of the folks on our call today, we've got a mix of people that are all providing professional services. And I, we all probably know two or three people doing the same things that each of our guests are doing. And so how do you speak about what you do from a personalization standpoint? Is there a proprietary process that you use is there a personal experience that you're leaning on because that's what people remember they remember stories right they don't care about features and benefits they care about stories so that's the first step is personalization of your message so you can stand out a little bit in the crowd you know we're, um, I'm working with Ian's team and we're talking about you know how do we get uh, mission suite to stand out in the crowd there's stories we can use, client examples we can use. 
you don't just buy this little bucket, you put data in. There are things that come with Mission Suite that nobody else offers. There's a personalized story we build around that. So we can immediately say, okay, Mission Suite versus X, Y, and Z, we see the difference. Mm -hmm. But if we just say CRM, and I'm yeah. not an expert in buying CRMs, I don't know. So that's the first step. It's that first box that, that um, in that row two is think about your unique processes, your proprietary solution. And if you don't have one, come up with one, make it up, make it up. I've been working on this um, approach called the friction effect. And, and the friction effects is things that happen in your marketing and sales process that slow down deals, cause, people, cause revenue to fall out of the funnel, cause prospects to go away. The friction effect. I just made it up. But it sounds like a proprietary process that Dean's pretty smart. He's got this thing, right? So think about that, right? Whether you're in uh, professional services or you have solutions you provide or technology, it doesn't matter. Start there because you'll start to stand out from your competition because they're all talking about features and benefits and blah, blah, blah. Talk about your proprietary uniquely used stuff. So that's so, the first step. So to, in, in just kind of diving in on that a little bit. So, you know, if I'm a CRM, right. And I mean, mission suite, we, the way that our, the way that our system works is very different from like a Salesforce, for example. Right. Yeah. But if I'm talking to HubSpot versus Mission Suite, you know, I mean, the how am I kind of defining that? How am I identifying that unique? I mean, that uniquely us thing. If I don't know, if I don't have it already, yeah. how am I like? What what steps should I go through in my head or on a whiteboard or what have you to actually kind of figure this out? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. It actually leads into the next section as well. It's all about keeping your market and your customer or your client in mind, mm -hmm. right? If you talk to your market, you're having enough sales calls, you're talking to prospects, be really intentional about trying to understand the current scenario that they're dealing with, mm -hmm. right? People are probably coming to you for similar things, similar pain points, similar issues, similar challenges, right? That's where you can build, um, you can focus your unique process around or your proprietary system. Um, so for, for the mission suite, what comes to mind is um, managing your referral partners, right? I can manage that relationship in any CRM, right? It's an empty mm -hmm. bucket. I can put data in it. I can set up workflows, but you have your referral bench system built right. into mission suite. So for me, for you guys, you're talking to a market that they get a lot of their business from referrals. And we all know that managing lots of referral relationships is a challenge, right? And so you build your referral bench messaging around that known problem for your audience. And all of a sudden it's like, I'm not buying a CRM, I'm buying a tool that's gonna to help me make more money because I make money through referrals. Right, right. right. So that's still the approach. So that whole concept of current scenario is really important and, and the more you understand the problem that your market's facing from their perspective, mm -hmm. not from us, not from the experts solving the problem's perspective, but from their perspective and the language they use, the way they talk about it in terms of emotion, right? And, and all of that, that stuff drives the messaging. But don't stop there. Go one layer deeper and understand what are the negative impacts of that problem, right? It's one thing to say I'm having a hard time tracking all my referral partners, if somebody would ever even say that, right? But mm -hmm. ask them, well, how is that impacting your business? How is it yeah. impacting your life? Because the impact is what they want to solve for. They don't care about the problem. They care about the poor result. That makes sense? Yeah. So the negative impact or unwanted consequences of not solving the problem. So really when it comes down to it, and so like we've got an IT company here on the, uh, on the, the call with us here today, right? right? So if we're thinking about like an IT company, what are we, I mean, I'm assuming the low hanging fruit is, uh, the low hanging fruit as well, your business can go belly up if you get attacked and that's and that can be dangerous, right? right. So there's things like that, that that we could talk about, but what about, I mean, I'm assuming that everybody's having that same conversation, right? So, are there, are there ways that we can kind of look at that differently for, uh, on, a, on a person to person or company to company basis that we're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of that next level of personalization. There are probably some buckets of problems that an IT company solves for, 
right? Mm -hmm. But we can't assume that the prospect we're speaking with is, has one of those problems or has all those problems. So you have to just literally ask the question, how are things working right now? Mm -hmm. right. Big open-ended general questions are the most powerful to start this discovery process. What's going on? What are you concerned about? What yeah. are the, and then what are the impacts of that thing? Because then all of a sudden you've, you've probably got messaging that's focused on one of those issues, right? Because you've mm -hmm. seen this trend, but we don't know if it's, if it's network security, data security is an issue or uptime, or employee productivity, or cost control, or moving from a server to the cloud. We don't know, right? we don't know, but there's all of those are potential issues that we solve for. So in your broader marketing, you have to weave in those scenarios because mm -hmm. you're dealing with general problems in the market um, for, for someone like this. But when you get into that discovery call, the goal, and we'll get into selling in a minute here, but the goal is not for you to discover something you can sell, right? That's the misnomer. When we hear discovery call, it's like, what can I find? I can sell you guys. No, no, no. <laughs> the collaborative selling process is all about helping them discover, not mm -hmm. you discover. So asking questions like how are things working, what's going on, and what are the impacts will help you really focus your messaging. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And so I see the next uh, the next piece here is when we actually get into that future state. Yeah, yeah. So if we sort of step, take a step back and think about our marketing messaging versus mm -hmm. a selling conversation, our marketing messaging, the absolute sweet spot of messaging is when you put something, some content out there, written video, audio, whatever it is, and your market says, holy cow, Ian read my mind. That's exactly my problem. That's exactly how I think about it. And that's what I'm afraid of, mm. right? That's the goal. So the more you sort of tap into your audience, the more you'll be able to do that. But then with future state, it's the same thing. It's like, yes, that's where I need to be. That's the problem I need to solve. That's where I want to, that's the result I want to have. Mm. So that future state opportunity is like, all right, so we've talked about this thing, this problem. These are the negative consequences of not solving this and not solving this now. What would you like? How would you like things to change? Right? Mm -hmm. You have to ask these questions first before you gather the information before you can build it into your messaging. Right. right? So how do you want these things to change? What does that future look like for you? They probably have a good sense of what it feels like, what it looks like, and po probably what the positive results are. The mm -hmm. Trouble is, there's a gap between current and future state. Right. right. By asking those insightful questions about current state and future state, you they infer that you know the answer. You right. can fill the gap. Your solution is the gap, but that's when they lean in. So to build that kind of messaging baseline, you can use that in your marketing. So you've got mm -hmm. to get that feedback right from the market. Yeah. And it seems like this is also kind of, this is a, it's a, this is an interesting transition to go from marketing and kind of lead generation and prospect attraction yep. into the selling process too, right? Because I mean, some of these things, like after you've done business with 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 people, you kind of get a feeling for what the future state looks like, and then you can right. kind of leverage that. But, you know, especially if you're just getting started, if you're, if you're early in the business, you know, I mean, there's, I know there's some folks here that have been on for, that have been around in their, in their business for less than a year, you know, I mean, so if you're, if you're at that stage, then asking these questions helps, does help you get into that sales process too. It, it totally does. And, and the beautiful thing about being new in business is that you can ask dumb questions and it's okay, <laughs> right? If you're perceived as the expert, you've been around, it's like, Maybe I shouldn't ask that. <laughs> so be a new guy. It's okay to be the new guy. And, and even if you are in, have been in business a long time, it's okay to still get that feedback from your market. It's so, mm -hmm. so important. So the more conversations you have um, with prospects, with clients, with strategic partners, referral partners, just ask these questions consistently and document the information. And the other thing is just listen online. Right, mm -hmm. social media is a really powerful listening tool. So if your if your market is on LinkedIn, for example, right, look at what your competition is talking about. See what content they're putting out there, and see if that if that messaging and that content is eliciting a response. Is are they just yelling into a black hole, mm -hmm. or are they getting comments, likes, shares? If they're getting reaction, they're getting engagement. You probably know there's there's something to that quite that content path right yeah. another really powerful tool is the linkedin polls right ask use a poll mm -hmm. little blurb in the post 
trying to figure out this stuff, love some feedback and put in three or four, you know, ask the question and put three or four responses in there. Polls were working really well and LinkedIn likes polls right now. So they're showing them to a wide audience. Okay. Right. And, and the whole concept of using quizzes in your sales funnel is actually working too. That's a different conversation, but it's a, a poll is just a small quiz, right? Sure. You're sure. gathering information. So use the poll. Gather information. LinkedIn's got those tools built in. You don't have to use an offline or, or a separate app for a, to ask a, a question anymore. It's right. built right into LinkedIn. Interesting. Gather that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because there are a lot of, I mean, I know that there are a lot of ways to, to kind of capture this information. And if the, if the if you don't have to go through the process of dealing with 50 clients, to get to it, it's going to help accelerate you a lot faster, right? It really is, yeah. And and if you've got if you've got clients, a list of clients, then create a poll and tag them in it. Send yeah. it to them, right? Do it all right there in LinkedIn because when people see somebody has responded to a poll, they're more likely to respond to a poll. Very so true. your friends and colleagues will probably respond if you ask them directly, and it builds some momentum as well. So. Mm-hmm. That feedback is critical and, and ask questions about current problems. Like we, we talked about earlier, uh, marketing and sales is changing because the way our modern buyer is changing. Mm-hmm. So that's current state, right? For our situation, it's current state. So ask current state questions and then ask future state questions. What are goals? What are the outcomes um, that you're looking for in business? Whatever the, you know, frame up the questions for, for your business. Mm-hmm. And then use that information. Start to use the the voice of the customer, that's a term that's used in marketing quite a lot, right? Voice of the customer. But I think, especially in smaller businesses, we sometimes get disconnected from that. You know, we're expected to have all the answers all the time. Yeah, very much no, so. Your clients have all the answers. That's where the magic is. Right, right. Absolutely. So speak a little bit to the positive. I mean, I feel like this is relatively self-explanatory, but uh, but just so that we just to make sure that we cover everything here to speak a little bit to the positive results and impacts. Yeah. 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 Don't assume it's a money, a money thing. I would say start mm-hmm. there, right? Not all business owners and executives are driven by dollars and cents that that's somewhere in the top 10, top five, but it's not necessarily everything. So one of the things uh, I, I recently um, joined a, a mastermind group and the leader of the mastermind group basically got me to sign up for a pretty expensive program for one thing, had nothing to do with me making more money, had all about me getting some time back. Mm -hmm. That was the thing I was going to gain from this group was to learn how to get some time back. It wasn't a time management thing. It was a structuring my business and some offers thing. Um, And that was the thing that got me to spend some money. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask the question, what's the impact? What's the result? What are you hoping for? And then dig seven layers deep. Because if they say, well, it will give me more time, mm-hmm. dig into that. What is that going to do for you? How are you going to spend that time? More time with my family, more time on the business, more time on. Then what? Dig into that. Dig it. Go seven layers deep because the first response is rarely the thing that's really driving the decision. Mm-hmm. Right? If it is a money thing, well, we can make more money. We can improve our cash flow and profitability. How's that going to help? Yeah. And then how's that going to help? And, how, and you may find that the money response is actually all about having impact or having um, security in life or giving more back to the employees or giving to a nonprofit or a charitable organization. Mm-hmm. That's the motivation for the change, not the making the money. Right, right. So dig into that. That's more of maybe a sales conversation situation, but you're going to still get some trends there that you can lean on. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I mean, one of the most impactful ways that I've been... Mean, just asking the question, why, right? I mean, I remember, you've, I mean, we've all, I'm sure most of us, if not all of us have heard of this Simon Sinek start with why thing, uh, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I was at the TEDx in San Diego where he presented one of his, uh, you know, one of his things and completely changed my thinking on the whole thing, but uh, on, on kind of getting to, getting to a message and whatnot, but yeah. If you can ask why, what is it, five times or six times, and if then you can get to a point where they can they 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 stop answering and they're not able to answer anything further, um, then that gets to be then you're able to really identify what the true impact, right? Because money, if money's the problem, then you know 
that's the, then there's not a problem. Right. I mean, it's, right. it's the, the real, the real issue is what the money does for, for, for us. So. Yeah. And yeah. it really, it, it, and it applies to both the current state and mm -hmm. the negative consequences right. and the future state and the positive outcomes, right? You can, mm -hmm. you need to do it both because if it's a money thing, the current state is we need to make more, we need to close more deals. We need to make more money. And you dig into the why, why, why you may find that there's something else out there that they really are trying to get to, but money is the path to achieving that. Mm -hmm. Great. Then you're aligned. Yeah. Um, and if you do that enough, you'll start to see some trends. If you're working with similar businesses, similar types of business owners or executives or buyers, you will start to see some trends. And it's behavioral trends, mm -hmm. not sort of functional trends, right? Nobody cares about your features and benefits. I don't right. care less. But everything, everywhere we look, it's try my trial for seven grand and it's features and benefits stuff. But everybody's right. saying that. That's why there's so much noise on LinkedIn. They're all using the same crappy formula. Absolutely. And, you know, this is interesting because, again, it's something that you can kind of circle or you can bring this into kind of a circular pattern when you're having conversations with people from what I'm seeing. Right. Right. Because, I mean, to your to the point that you made about positive results and feeding back into negative issues, you know, negative consequences. I mean, that's a big thing because there's a lot of things that there's a lot of positive results that people might be looking for the negative of which they never would have thought about uh, yeah. dealing with. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Because, so if you ask them, you know, what's keeping you up at night, mm -hmm. worst sales question ever. Right. You're right. Um, you get this long list of just things that are a pain in the butt uh -huh. problems. Some of them are going to be a higher priority than others, but unless you get into the impact, you don't get into the urgency. And without urgency, you don't get prioritization. And so mm -hmm. one of the questions to ask is if you, let's, let's move forward. Let's assume you're in a sales conversation, right? Or a discovery call. And you mm -hmm. get all this stuff, right? Current problem, current problem, current problem. Here's the impact, here's the impact, here's the impact. One really easy question I like to ask is, what is the one thing you've got to solve in the next 90 days? Right. That's it. What's the one thing? And then they'll stop, they'll think, because you've already talked about the negative impacts to them, their business, their cash flow, their life, their family, their time, their health. Mm -hmm. That will help them prioritize the thing. Like, holy cow, that is the one thing I've got to solve in the next 90 days. Right. It may not be the thing you can solve for, which is okay, but you've just really added a ton of value and you help them prioritize this wish list. Mm -hmm. um, and then that also leads to the, I'll think about it, or I'll get to it eventually and they never make a buying decision because they got a problem, but the pain isn't great enough. And the urgency right. is you get past all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that, that um, problem and urgency sort of quadrant, you want to be in that top right hand corner, right? High problem, high pain, high urgency will get them to take action. Um, but if you just stop at the negative impact or the positive outcome, you won't get there. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Anything else you want to touch on on this uh, this this section of the guide here? For the messaging, no, I don't think so. I think that these are pretty self-explanatory. I think that again, it's all about personalization. It's all mm -hmm. about personalization of your stuff and your market. But ultimately, get to understanding the behaviors and decision making. That's where you want to get to. That's why you want to understand the pain. Mm -hmm. And what's the priority? Because then you can understand the behavior and decision making. Then you can align. That becomes the foundation for your messaging. Yeah, right. Foundation of your messaging. So go through this exercise. This is a never ending, as much as I hate to say it, this is always, always should be on your mind when you're talking to prospects, talking to sure. the market. So, Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, what I've, what I've noticed, something that I've noticed in, in this, you know, every time we talk about what's changed in sales and marketing, what's new, what's different, et cetera. You know, one of the things that we don't, that I feel like a lot of us don't realize or don't acknowledge is that sales and marketing is not changing, but the client's changing. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so as you keep going through these, as you start to keep having these questions, you can keep having these conversations about negative impacts, you know, uh, positive impact of solving the problem, things like that, you're going to realize that certain that a lot of these things are going to change over time, they're shifting over time. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it may or may not matter right now. But you know, in 
like cybersecurity is a perfect example of this, right? Yep. Cybersecurity yep. for most IT companies is probably one of the biggest things out there right now because of all these ransomware attacks and this, that, and the other thing, all these news stories that, are, that have been coming out for the past couple of years. But, you know, it wasn't really a, a, a need. It wasn't really something that, well, I mean, it was always a need, but it wasn't something that was important at the time. Yeah, right? yeah. And they don't want to, they don't want to spend money on that stuff. Mm-hmm. They don't want to spend money educating their employees to not click on phishing emails. They don't want to right. do that. What they want to do is protect their business. Mm-hmm. They want to protect their livelihood. They want to protect yeah. their data. That's what they want. That's the positive outcome. It's that protection, which leads to probably peace of mind, increased valuation, blah, 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 whatever those other things are. They don't want to spend money on cybersecurity stuff. Right. Right. No, they'd Absolutely. rather go buy a boat or whatever. Right. Who cares? So it's not about the cybersecurity service. It's about what the result of having that in place, right? right. Is it the peace of mind and so on? So you got to get below the alpha, get below yeah. the service. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, very cool. So let's jump over to the sales and marketing tech stack guide. So yeah. this is an interesting one for me anyway. <laughs> this is my world. Um but, uh, you know, I, I put together the things that I've been, a list of the things that I've been seeing pretty much everybody using at, to some degree in uh, when it comes to marketing, to sales and marketing technology. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, and I don't know that we need to spend a ton of time on this, but there was a couple pieces here that I really want to dive into, right? Yeah, so I, I was going to ask you, you know, you, you, you speak tech language, right? Mm-hmm. And so for our audience, there's a list of what, probably 10 or so or more, maybe a dozen different technology options here. You mm-hmm. already touched on it. Do we all need everything? Probably not. But how, how do we go about understanding, like, do I need a CRM? What about lead gen, email marketing? How's that different than marketing automation? Maybe mm-hmm. sort of set a little bit of context, if you would, yeah. for the group, that would be great. Absolutely. And so, you know, I mean, the, the CRM, the, on the CRM side of things, you know, it, it, the, the lead gen side, you know, a lot of this stuff does actually sound pretty similar, right? But I mean, when you think about a CRM, you're, you're, the reality is that you're looking at the, is that you're looking at um, the data that you have, right? The information that you have, the contacts that you have. And these are people that you already have at least, re, you know, maybe you've reached out, maybe you've, you know, maybe that you've met them before, whatever. But I mean, they're, they're all people that you've already, they're leads that you have already generated. They live in your CRM, right? But once you get done with your, you know, let's say you're a salesperson and you get a hundred leads from your sales manager. Once you get done with that, those hundred leads, now what? Right. Now you got to figure out how to get more. And so before, I mean, you and I have been doing this, both been doing this long enough to remember the days when it was literally the yellow pages uh, sitting on our desk and we just would go down and, you know, find our, we'd have Rolodex cards and write down the people that actually talked to us for more than three seconds. And, you know, they would go into a stack and then you just work the Rolodex and whatnot over and over and over again. Um, fortunately now there's a lot of easier things that are out there. So, um, there are tools out here and I'm just, I'm going to kind of fill in a couple of these, uh, real quick, cause great. there's, um, there's hunter.io and this is a great way, f- uh, to connect to, uh, to take a look at somebody's website. Cause if you go to someone's website, you can, ha- and you have a, the hunter.io extension on Google, then it'll, uh, you can actually see what their email um, it'll help to pull up, it'll help to pull up your, uh, the, the contacts that, that they can identify that Hunter can identify in that company. And it'll give you a sense of the email structure that, that it has. Right. So it's a really good tool because it's a way that you can kind of make a guess at what the, that initial email is. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say that have their email addresses pretty well hidden. But if you can kind of guess the email address, then it's gonna, then, you know, they'll, they'll respond just because, you kind of spun the right wheel, yep. um, you know, so that's, so that's one tool that's out there. It's more of a manual tool. So you've got to do your own hunting for it, right? So you've got to go out, you've got to find those websites of the companies that you want to have. You've got to have your target list out there and uh, already, right? So it's, it is more of a manual tool, but it can be super valuable there. Um, the next thing that I like to talk about is lead fuse. Now, mm-hmm. 
lead fuse is a cool is a really cool system it actually it's a, it's more it can, it can be more of an automated system mm. because you can actually you can put in your your search criteria and then that'll help to actually produce a list of contacts and companies for you right and they're a data provider they're pretty straightforward um but they can be really powerful and it can be a really powerful tool because you can get i mean you you can get cell phone numbers you can get you know, direct lines, you can get uh, direct emails, personal emails, LinkedIn uh, accounts and whatnot. And, you know, I mean, with any data platform or lead generation platform, there are, there's going to be some ups and downs, right? I mean, the, some of the LinkedIn's are not, are not going to be valid anymore. And some of the email addresses are going to be bad. That's okay. It's right? not perfect. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's never going to be perfect because there's too much. There's always going to be too much sh shifting going on. But this is a good place to start, because if you pull a list of 100 people, you're probably going to get about 75, 75 of them that are going to be solid. So yep. um, great, great place to uh, both of these two things are great places to start. Um, and then, of course, you know, the other lead generation tool is Sales Navigator um, on LinkedIn. Uh, personally, when, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I prefer lead fuse to sales navigator, um, just because lead fuse doesn't kind of shift quite as much as, uh, as sales navigator does being just through being owned by a social media company, right. That's going to happen. Right. But, uh, but those are, but I'd say those are kind of the three things that I would take a look at for on the lead generation front to figure out how you're going to actually build out your leads list, because these can be super, super valuable for you and help you to get really quality information. Yeah, that's great. And so keep in mind what your outreach strategy is, right? What is your prospecting approach? Mm -hmm. And then pick a tool that supports that. If you're like all into LinkedIn and you, you want like all that LinkedIn based data, Navigate is awesome. Yeah. But if you're doing some omni-channel, multi-channel outreach, mm -hmm. use LeadFuse because you're going to get those other sort right. of data points as well. So exactly. think about your, your approach, yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing about uh, LeadFuse, at least, and I think Hunter has a connection to it too, is that there's a tool called Zapier that yeah. connects that connects uh, platforms. So, you know, for example, LeadFuse can feed into your CRM or LeadFuse can feed into your social media, uh, uh, social cold outreach, other cold outreach tools, right? So yep. things like that, that, uh, that you can utilize. Um, you know, email marketing, everybody knows it. Email marketing, we've talked about this before. It's still probably it's, it is still the highest ROI out there um, as long as you're doing it the right way. And okay. that means that you're not put taking a list of 10,000 people and dropping it into MailChimp. Um, and if you're going to do something like that, use MailChimp because Mission Suite doesn't want that many cold emails going out. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it, it's, it's, you're not, a, you're not just blasting cold emails, like a newsletter to a bunch of cold people um, through a third, through a third party system, right? You're going to, you'll end up getting blocked by the third party system. You'll, you're, you know, you'll still have access, but you won't be able to actually send any emails. Yeah, you get flagged, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And so there's there's those kinds of problems there. But email marketing still has like a 40% ROI. So if you can actually build your list and focus on getting people interested and engaged and willing and interested in signing up for something to build your list, then all of a sudden you're in a you're in a position where you can start to see some things come up. It's not a it's not a tomorrow deal, but it's something that over time you can really see a lot of value out of. Yep. Yep. Um, and when we talk about email marketing, that's it's that's really that really is newsletters and kind of blast emails, promotion emails, things like that. With marketing automation, on the other hand, this is where we get to be a little bit more intricate, right? And so you may have heard of the, you know to, to the people that are on the call, you may have heard of things like Marketo, HubSpot. Uh, obviously, Mission Suite does this. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different tools that are out there. But marketing automation, really, at the end of the day, what it does is it kind of you build a journey, right? And you get to build that buyer's journey that uh, that that Dean and I have talked about so many times, and it can be a, a series of steps that all starts with a single point, right? A single touch point, single opt-in, whether it's download this white paper or whatever it might be, and then you send them the white paper, 
and then you offer something of a little bit more value that maybe has a little bit more that's a little bit more focused on uh, on you know maybe you get their so just their email address you get a first name and a company name as well things like that that we're able to do so marketing automation is is a is a tool that you're going to use to really kind of create a flow that you want them to go through um, and that's uh, and that's and that's how you're gonna that's how you're gonna build that so it's always I mean, I'm a firm believer that it is always uh, a good idea to have some sort of marketing automation tool uh, in place. There are, um, again, there are hundreds of them there that are that are out there. You know, one of the things Mission Suite does, I mean, Mission Suite pulls all this stuff together into most of the stuff together into one tool, which is right. one of the things that I've always liked about our system. But um, but there are other there are other tools out there that are maybe going to be more uh, more in line with some other things as well. And so yeah. if you ever want to, and if you ever want to, you know, you're looking for something and, you know, you want to Marketo is something like three, three grand a month. So if you want, so you can find do a Google search for inexpensive alternatives to Marketo, you'll find a, you'll find other options too. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Yeah. I think when it comes to selecting the, all these different technologies is come up with your requirements document, right? Mm -hmm. What do you, what are the things you want it to do? Right, right? absolutely. Versus shop first, well, I need to go buy a car. Well, there's lots of options, right? What, do you want yep. a four-wheel drive? Do you want a, a um, you know, station wagon? Do you want an SUV? What do you want? Start with your requirements first and mm -hmm. then start to look for solutions that solve those problems. Yeah. Do they still make station wagons? <laughs> is, that, is that still a thing? That's a good uh, Subaru yeah. makes a station wagon. That's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. It doesn't have that cool backward seat in the trunk. Right. Yeah. Anymore, All the wooden though, paddles yeah. on the side. Yeah. Right. right exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, so website landing page builder, you know, there are things that are out there, you know, again, Mission Suite do, does offer this. I don't, although I will say that I don't like using third party systems for website and uh, for free as your website builder so if you're going to do something like this i would stick to something like a wordpress to build your uh, to build your website um or you know i mean squarespace and there's uh there's a bunch of them out there yeah. um but uh, uh wix is another one that uh, that i've known some people that i've had have had some success with right. um for, but keep in mind that you're and the nice thing about when you have these set up is that you can use these same tools and keep your landing pages on with your website right um now there is a case to be made for things like uh for independent landing page builders things like mission suite has an independent landing page builder in it that's a perfect use case for the website builder inside of mission suite right um there's another great one called uh unbounce which yep. is great for um which is great for landing pages. Um, uh, so because, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a system that keeps everything off, uh, it keeps everything off of your website. Mm -hmm. there, and depending, it, I mean, you have to talk to your web developer and your digital marketing uh, folks to, 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 to make a determination on what's gonna be more effective for you. But, um, but there are reasons that, that uh, there are some, certain reasons to, to keep them together. For, for social, for, I'm sorry, for search engine reasons. And then there are reasons, there are certain reasons to keep them separate, separate as well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, sometimes you want custom domains for landing pages for a particular yeah. campaign or offer. So, those are things to keep in mind as, right. you, as you look at these technologies as well. Exactly. Um, now, cold outreach this is something that uh, and i want to i want to make sure that we're that we were kind of cognizant of the time here too i don't want to start up too much oxygen but um but cold outreach is another interesting one because you know we talk about cold outreach and people are really concerned about spam and rightly so right because again if you're using a third-party system like mission suite or mailchimp or emma or what have you you know you're going to be uh, you're at risk right off the bat because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you, and we've actually, we did a community table with Adrian Savage before uh, a few months back. Uh, yeah. That was probably about a year ago now, yeah. but, um, but, you know, it, it, where he talked about the, about, you know, why emails get bounced to promotions or to spam or what have you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so it's important to make sure that you're, the list that you're working on is is really clean with your email marketing through a third-party sure. system. Cold outreach, on the other hand, is still legal 
I mean, in accordance with can spam laws, but you're technically not supposed to do it through a third party system. So right off the bat, you're breaking terms and conditions. Yep. Second of all, the uh, you're, so there are tools that are out there that will actually connect directly to your, um, to your email platform. And it will actually send those emails out for you. So it'll connect to MailChimp. It'll, or I'm sorry, it'll connect to Gmail, it'll connect to Outlook, you know, things like that. So there are tools like Woodpecker that, uh, uh, it's woodpecker.co, if I remember correctly. Um, well, I'd say just do a search for Woodpecker and cold email. Um, there's Alfred is, uh, does, have, yep. does have email in there. There's uh, Lemlist is another one for, for cold email. Um, and then the other thing here, and because we, again, we all know that we shouldn't be doing, you know, <laughs> too much automation on LinkedIn. Right. Um, but there is still a, there's still a place for it, right? I mean, there's, if you find yeah. something that's working, then, you know, like we stumbled upon something that was working. So it's a good time to actually, to automate that. And <clears throat> so there are tools that are out there. And the one tool that I always recommend people use for LinkedIn is Alfred. Yep. Um, you know, there was a tool that uh, that countless people used it for a long time, but it was based out of Russia. And so now they won't let people uh, pay them anymore. So, yeah, uh, nobody can upgrade their <laughs> nobody can upgrade their other uh, stuff. But um, but uh, but yeah, so but using something like Alfred is a great tool. It's a it's a good system to utilize. Um, it is a uh, uh, and it's a system that that it'll connect to LinkedIn. You can send out a connection request. You can actually engage with people's profile too, right. um, which is kind of cool. So it's not like you're just kind of out of the blue, but people see that you visit their profile, stuff like that. There's, um, what's the duck one? Do you remember the? Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, but then there were, um, there are a couple others that, that I can't remember off the top of my head, but, um, but definitely, I mean, I would say take a look. You know, look look up some LinkedIn automators. You know, some are going to be are are managed by others, and most of them are now managed by you directly when you're using them. Mostly because managing them uh, for other people leads to the automated messages that Dean's describing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, Not when you're uh, yeah yeah exactly. Yeah. So just for the for the sake of time here, I think the moral of the story is think about what your prospecting and sales process is, mm -hmm. right? Understand which channels you're going to use consistently, LinkedIn, email, text messaging, whatever it is. And then back into your sort of requirements document, right? Do we do we want a few separate platforms all together? Or are we going to buy one platform that does them all? Right. right. So right. Think through that process. otherwise it's overwhelming. So as you got like you got a, a furry friend there. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We uh, uh, he's he came to the office with me today and, you know, he's a, a, a 25 pound uh, hardcore guard dog. Yeah. Yeah. Big, yeah. scary dude. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. And, and that's exactly right. You know, I mean, it's oh. uh, it's important to make sure that that you know exactly that you know what you want to be doing but realistically it's in some in some way all of these tools should be represented at some point in your tech stack right yep. so i mean at some point is the important right. is the important word uh, phrase there right because you want to make sure that it's that you know you're you've got a crm first you've got your lead gen next and then you've got your email marketing and then add automation to that right because doing it trying to do it all at once it's going to um and the mission suite again is a tool that can do this all at once. That's a one sign up and you, and you've got access to all of it. But the challenge to that is that now all of a sudden you've got, uh, you, uh, if you try to actually implement it all at once, now you've got a, this overwhelming system. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, tough for adoption. Yeah. Buy yeah. mission suite, but you know, just <laughs> have a plan, right? You know? Implement it in stages. That's right. Exactly. Right. right. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the collaborative selling. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a few minutes just to cover this and um, we can spend some more time and maybe another day on this as well. Mm -hmm. So what's changed, right? Let's go back to the context of the of today's um, discussion is what's changed? Well, most people use some form of collaborative selling, right? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. consultative selling, excuse me, consultative selling. Um, I did some research on consultative selling and apparently it's been around since 1970. 
been a while. Wow. Been a while. So do we think that buyers have changed the way they buy since 1970? <laughs> yeah, probably, right? Now, at the core of consultative telling, it's, it's being a consultant, being a value, sharing ideas. That, that doesn't change. But here's the thing. Consultative selling is really about me asking these insightful questions to be the consultant, to bring solutions, some ideas, so I can sell you something. That's the core of it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's fine to a point. But here's, because buyers have changed the way they buy, they've done, they've, they've done their own consulting, their own research. They've already got a good sense of what the solutions are and what you can do for me. So right. we don't have as much leverage in that conversation as we used to because they're educated. Mm -hmm. So I'm advocating this approach. Uh, um, it's been out for a while, but I think it's really more appropriate now than ever is the collaborative selling approach. So the consultative is sort of like direct head on selling, ask questions, discovery, sell something. Mm -hmm. Collaborative selling is instead of selling across the desk, we're going to walk around and sit in a chair next to our prospect and sell side by side. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have to take especially in the early discovery stage, take your own um, goals and results out of the conversation. So when we do discovery, we're not trying to discover something to sell. We're trying to help them discover what's going on in the business. Mm -hmm. Really understand the current state, the problems, the future state associated, um, the positive outcomes. When you think about it from that perspective, we're helping them discover, not us. It's a whole different type of conversation. Disconnect from the outcome. Right, because sometimes we're not the right solution, and that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Um, and if you take that approach, it changes the ten the the the, the tension in the conversation because buyers have tension with sellers. But when they immediately start to feel like, all right, this person's helping guide me, they're not going to try and sell. you get to sell. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong; it's still a selling approach, but you don't get to sell too soon. Right. So that's that's something I think is really important. Um, if you can help them really create this sort of joint effort. They're an expert in their business mm -hmm. and their pain and their problem. You're an expert in solving similar problems. So you get to team up. Mm -hmm. You get to team up. And then you may discover we're the guys for you. We're not. If not, right. we can maybe suggest some things. We can make some introductions. Either way, the outcome is a good one for everyone, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's and this is something that... Uh, I feel like I kind of, you know, referencing the IT world again, I feel yeah. like this is something that, that is, that, I mean, is, is kind of an easy low hanging fruit to discuss in IT, right? Because you're literally as an IT provider, you're working with the, you, I mean, the only option a lot of times is to literally sit next to the person, <laughs> open up laptops and work through yeah. where yeah. things have to go and what's, what's failing and what's not. And, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. And so there's, there, there is, a, it's, a, it, it, be, it does, it creates a very natural discovery process. Now the, the, and again, I think we could probably do an entire session on this, but the challenge that I see with this, and I'd be interested in hearing how to do this is that it takes a while to get, to build up that trust, to be a collaborator, right. rather than just a, con a consultant who's, who's being paid attention to for two hours. And then, you know, we'll figure out what, what to do next kind of a deal. So yeah. how yeah. do you, is there a way to bridge that gap to get to that, to find that trust and to really, really lock that in so that you can actually be, be known as a collaborator? Yeah, yeah, I, that's it's a tough one, right? Because it's sort of this sort of personality dance that we do with, mm -hmm. with our prospects. But I think the most, one of the most important things is don't ask salesy questions. Yeah. Don't ask about your decision-making process. Don't ask about your budget. Don't ask about that stuff. Nothing smells like a salesperson than those more than those questions, right? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Focus so get rid on... of Bant altogether. Yeah. Bant, yeah. down the road. Down the road. Right. Yeah. A medic, same thing. Down the road. Uh, it doesn't work, right? It, it just creates this false um, paradigm with the prospect that you say one thing, but you're actually doing something else. Your questions right. and behavior are actually sharing, uh, uh, connecting differently. So don't ask those questions. Ask questions about them mm -hmm. and not leading questions so you can go sell something, right? Get beyond that surface. So I think that's really, really important. Um, and then insightful questions get, you get the opportunity to share your expertise, right? Right. Share your expertise by asking insightful questions, get them to think about their problem differently. Get them to think about the impacts differently and the and then what kind of follow up, right? That three, mm -hmm. five, seven layers deep that establishes you 
as a, an expert, as a consultant, and not as a salesperson. Yeah. So that go through that first, and I know we're right at the top of the hour. But one more thing I want to I want to leave on this collaborative sales process is figure out get them to talk in terms of the non-negotiables, the features, facts, benefits, whatever around the solution. What are the mm-hmm. must-haves for the solution? They need to say them. You need right. to leave them a little bit, share them. You can say, do you need email marketing? Do you need CRM? Do you need automation? No, these three are my must-haves. Mm-hmm. They're framing up the solution for you and you're a fit or you're not, right? right. So that, that's an important piece. And it's not getting them to say, here are the features that work well for our solution. That's not the goal here. So maybe we should do another session. Yeah. There's a lot more to do, but you can you can navigate that sales conversation in a side by side role versus mm-hmm. across the desk role, and the outcomes are very different. And yeah. it actually speeds up the decision making process, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which sounds sort of counterintuitive, but it actually does. And we'll get into that another day, maybe. Yeah, very cool. Well, I mean, we always have to figure out what our topic is for next month. So yeah. here we go. Yeah, Dennis, right. seems like <laughs> bring with us. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, this has been great. I mean, uh, you know, if the. Uh, it, Having the the if there's one thing to take away from this conversation <laughs> on this one is kind of tough though, but <laughs> but it is uh, yeah. But uh, but I would encourage anybody you know uh, first of all definitely pull down that workbook, uh, save it on your own, and then you know use the different to use the different sections and that to uh, to actually kind of build your stuff, build out your you know f- identify your tech stack, identify things that you might be interested in, uh, and identify you know like your uniquely you proposition and those types of things. Um, because that's going to be hugely helpful uh, to, to pull that all down. And if you have any questions, you know, again, we're, this is on, on the Mission Suite Facebook page. It's on Mission Suite's YouTube channel. Um, if you have any questions that didn't get answered, that we didn't uh, that we'd talk through, then we, uh, you know, you can go back over there, uh, drop, drop a question in the comments, and then we'll make sure to get them answered too. Um, and then stay tuned for next month, which we I'm assuming is going to be all about collaborative selling. You know? yep, it probably will be. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. We appreciate the time and attention and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Cheers. See you, everyone.